Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 4. This is a really good episode, especially the first two heats. So let's get started. And remember, this is a recap, so if you want to see the whole program, you can see it on Prime Video, or you can find it on YouTube. Now let's get going. And if you would, please consider subscribing and leaving me a thumbs up. So first we get to see the artists with their self-portraits. This is what they had to produce in order for the judges to decide that they should be on the program. And thousands of people enter this contest. So I'm just amazed at the length and breadth of the ability and the enthusiasm for painting that's in the UK. I wish that we had this in the United States, but we do not. I mean, we have enthusiastic painters, but we don't have a program like this. Um, and, and, and there's no explanation for why, but, uh, but here we go. They're, these all look just so good and so individual. I mean, I love to see how people decide to represent themselves. It gives you kind of a window into their personality and their creativity. Oh, I love that one so much. The gesture of it, <laughs> I mean, the humor, and just the, the gosh darn good uh, uh, drawing and painting ability. Oh, oh my gosh, so many good painters. This is this is going to be impossible. So as far as I'm concerned, everybody's a winner. Everybody should go through. But we're going to look at the paintings because that's what the program is about and just enjoy the, the rarefied field that we have here today. And we're just so lucky to see this and I'm so lucky to see it with you. So there are our nine contestants. Remember, each contestant is going to paint uh, well, there are three models, so three people for each model. Now, our first model up is named Celeste. Now, Celeste is known, is a, is a singer. And she looks like she would be a really great entertainer. She just has a lot of expression in her face. And um, I enjoyed the texture of the clothes that she wore as well as the, um, as the colors. And all the backgrounds today are not very exciting, which is fine. It's just... Um, you know, each episode is different in terms of how uh, busy they decide they want the background to be. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get to see what they've done. Here's the first one. That looks great to me. Wow, really great to me. How does somebody do that in four hours? Well, I'm a fast painter, so I could, I could certainly paint in four hours, but, but to do it with the lights on and being interrupted for interviews and to have the crowd noise behind you and all those distractions, I, I just I, it boggles my mind that, that anybody can do this, especially with the pressure of not being able to sleep the night before and traveling to the venue and the very tight time constraints. It, it's just... It's so loaded. Here's the second one, and this is a pastel. Another beautiful job. You know, that once again, this is an island surrounded by oceans painting. Uh, and I just wish that um, she had, she had uh, or the person had made the shoulders. Just just a line there to, to anchor the, uh, the, the face and the neck in place. I don't mind an unfinished painting at all. I just, I just want it to be anchored in. Like I said, island surrounded by oceans is just, it's a pet peeve of mine. But close up, wow, beautifully done. What 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 a good drawing. Now clearly, this was technology was used here, and I think technology is usually used. You know, because you're pretty far away from the model, you're not going to be able to see eyelashes. You're just not going to be able to see that with your naked eye. So a combination of the sitter being there as well as technology is really helpful. I've also been told by different participants that I've interviewed on my YouTube channel that uh, oftentimes the models might be uh, not not very still or might be talking on the phone or just plain not there in front of you. So you, you better have some technology with you. Here's the next one. Remember, there are three for each model. I absolutely love this. Oh, I love this. It has lost and found edges using complementary colors, you know, green against the reds there and the oranges. And once again, you know, the figure looks like she's emerging from the canvas instead of that an image was placed on the canvas. And that takes a great deal of care and building. And, and that's just, just 
a style that I particularly like. And I also like that um, the careful mix of neutrals here. There's no neutral that's, well, I guess you could argue the, the black is, is pretty darn neutral, but, but her neutrals are really packed with color. And that, that produces a very exciting painting overall. There's nothing dull going on here. And you can clearly see that titanium white was not used in order to uh, get the value range that she wanted. So things did not become muddy at all. Uh, that's just a beautiful job. Oh my gosh. I don't know how they're going to decide. But anyway, what I didn't mention before is each one of the celebrities gets to pick one of these paintings to take home. And this is a great honor. And Celeste picks my probably my favorite one, but it must be just horrible to have to choose one of these when they're all so deserving. But this is the one she chooses to go home. And this would look great on a gallery wall too. It's a really powerful painting. So nice job, everybody. Now the next model up is Lydia West. Lydia West is a British actress. She looks really familiar to me. Um, I do watch a lot of BBC and also BritBox and, and Acorn TV as well. Um, I don't know, she just looks so engaging and delightful. There's something about her face. But it's a very difficult face to paint because it's so symmetrical. You know, there's no character lines or anything to really dig into. So that, that's surprisingly harder. So uh, four hours in, the artists turn their easels around. We get our first look at what they've done. And once again, this is a really, really strong field. And we have some pretty varied media being used as well. So here's the first one up. It's... It's an absolutely beautiful job, and I really, really like the composition of this. See how it's anchored in place, and a, a, a negative space around it kind of gives it, um, kind of echoes the, the shape of her hair. That's just, that's just really nice design being done there. I'm not sure that it, it resembles her exactly, but it certainly represents her. And, uh, you know, from what I can tell from the judging on this program, that's really what they're looking for overall. And it looks, it looks fresh and clean and really nicely done. Now the next one up is a drawing. This is the hardest for you to get. You know, you don't get to decide where you're going to be placed in the program. You know, you, you, you don't get to decide your model. You don't get to decide where you're going to be set up. So a direct face-on view is the hardest to do. You don't have any angles to deal with. And that makes it super, super hard. So this, this, this would have been the hardest vantage point to work from but it's absolutely beautifully done. You can see how small it is. So it's a real small gem of a painting. It sure looks like her as well. So I, I, this could be a strong contender for her to take home. Well, they all could be really. I don't know, I don't no idea which one she's gonna pick. But remember the final commission, the final prize is a commission on a gallery, gallery wall and that's gonna be a big piece. So, I don't know that we know that this person can work in a larger size yet, but I'm going to assume that she can because uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure the judges had a look at her portfolio before before anything got started here. I, I don't know that for sure. It's just my guess. Now here's the last painter coming up, and I adore this. I can't even talk about how much I adore this because of the minimalism that's being done here. Nothing is too much. Everything is incredibly deliberate, incredibly accurate, and yet it, you're free to complete the painting in your own mind as well. I don't know, I, I can't even explain why this is the kind of painting that I just really aspire to do, because it has so much confidence and it's carefully edited and designed. It's just, it's just fabulous. So Lydia West is gonna pick one to take home and I, I don't know which one she's going to pick, but, oh, wow, great. Okay, well, she picked this one. Now, now this was the guy whose self-portrait I liked so much, where it had the gesture of pointing up to himself. So uh, it's a small gem as well. But that, that would be smart to, to pick a size that you know that you can accomplish, because although you have four hours altogether, that is going to be interrupted with... Um, like I said, interviews and crowd noise and all kinds of things. So I'm sure everybody has practiced really hard ahead of time. Now, the last model is Alistair Campbell. He's a journalist, so I'm not familiar with him. But uh, <laughs> but let's see. Yep, yep. Wow. Uh, 
<laughs> cool socks. <laughs> Now, the great thing about somebody who doesn't have a lot of hair on their head that I like is it gives me information because I can see the shape of their head. It's just easier for me to find the planes of the face when you can go from the proportions from the head to the chin. But, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not a portrait painter. Portrait painters have to hit it, you know, nine out of nine times. I can hit a likeness eight out of, well, more like seven out of nine times. <laughs> I don't always hit it right. So here's our first painter up. And yeah, his self-portrait had a double image as well. So that's kind of a thing that he does. And I kind of like that. You know, there is no one, we all know this from looking at our own photo albums, there's no one picture that completely captures who we are. And we know even supermodels, when they're being shot, you know, they'll take something like 500 pictures of, of somebody who has an absolute perfect face and body. And from that, they'll, you know, decide which one, which image they're going to use, and then they Photoshop that on top of everything. So why not have two images? It's more descriptive of who the person is, really. So um, that's very interesting. They must have moved their easel around or maybe, again, used technology in order to get two views. I don't know. But it's beautifully done. I believe it's an oil painting. And the brushwork is done very much as if it was a, uh, a pastel or, or a drawing. So that shows a lot of confidence. Now the next one on it up, I think, is really exciting because I just think this is really what the what uh, what Alistair looked like. So she captured a likeness really, really well. And uh, boy, uh, I don't know how you could do a better job than that. Let's pull back and take a look at the size. Yeah, okay, done on a piece of paper, beautifully done. Yeah, really nice job. Oh boy, what are the judges going to do today? This would be the day I would phone in sick or take a snow day. This is impossible. All right, here's the last one. Now, what I know from, again, from interviewing artists who participate in the program, you know, they say that you kind of have to decide if you're going to do the head or the body because you don't have enough time in a way to do both. So this is a good compromise. And the person's going to be judged on what they did, which is good. I mean, it's great. But, but not on what they didn't do. But clearly she's showing I can work in a large format and I can show a relaxed pose. I have the ability. And so, um, so that was smart to do. And that's what I mean by anchoring it in. It, it, it sounds like a simple step to do, but it, it took a great deal of care to do this here. There's a lot of proportion and a lot of things to consider in order to get it right. And again, to make a figure look relaxed, especially a face, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to do. So let's see which one Alistair picks to, to take home. And I would pick any of these to be in my home because they're just gosh darn good paintings. But this is the one he picks. Well, that is the one that resembles him the most. So now we get to the final not the final judging, but the judging. The judging begins. Now, the judges are going to pick three of these people to go on to the semifinals of this episode, and only one will go on to the semifinals of the program. So this is the artists all lined up waiting for the announcement of who the three are who will be pulled today for the semifinals. And this must be incredibly nerve-wracking and exhausting. By now, you've been on your feet for a very, very, very long time. All right, here's the first one up. Well, I certainly support this being a pick. This was a very, very strong contender. So, um, yeah, I would definitely advance her. We talked about the use of complementary colors. And, you know, I, what I, I've said this before in other recaps, but I like, I want to say this is sim simplistic painting. And what I mean by that, it's not simplistic painting at all, but there's no eyelashes involved. In other words, it's it has more of a... It's more of an impressionist kind of just really looking at the shape and value relationships. And, and all, all three of these painters did that. They're not getting involved in the minutia. They're looking overall. And you know what I, what I tend to call when I go in my studio, I call it getting the job done. You gotta get the job done. So there's a self-portrait next to the work that they did today. Now remember the self-portrait, they had all the time in the world to do. Today they only had four hours. So we can see she's very consistent and she's a very strong painter. When she has more time, it looks like she can saturate the colors and layers a little bit more. But boy, she is incredibly capable. So um, I would advance her, but I'm going to advance all these people. So. <laughs> uh. 
That's why I would be no good in a competition. I would be absolute rubbish. I just feel like if you showed up and you participated and you did the work, you go on. Oh, I love the self-portrait so much. He wasn't able to get the dramatic lighting that he got in the self-portrait. And I, oh, I feel the pain of that because I know when you get a really good image to work from with dramatic light, how easily the, the portrait will fall together. And of course, this is under artificial light for everybody today in this setting. And this is just great work. Wow, holy smokes. And not a whole lot of difference between what she did when she had a lot of time and what she did today. Whoa, she's, she's definitely going to be up for the job. So I don't know what the judges are going to do. All three of these painters. This is one of the best episodes we've ever had. But somebody has to win because it's a show. <laughs> it's an entertainment. So the final judging begins. And the judges are going to pick one of these people to go on to the semifinals. And who knows, maybe one of these people will end up being Portrait Artist of the Year. So there they are, waiting to hear who the final name will be. <sighs> uh, I, I would have to sit down at this point. I would be, my legs would have given out by now. But let's see what happens. The winner is, well, we're about to find out with a certain amount of drama. I really wish all of them could win because I want to see more from all of them. So I'll go back and take a look at, at their websites if they have them. So this is our winner for today. And I'm thrilled that she's the winner. Oh, gosh. Can't wait to see more from her. Maybe she'll end up winning the whole program. I think it's very, very possible. She's a really strong painter. So thank you for watching. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.